This is an EMD FP45 that I liberated from a train show vendor a few days ago. It does run, not too bad, needs a bit of a lube job. Also has a tendency to fall off the tracks now and then. Welcome to Cheer Up Tuesday. I believe this is an Athern, judging by the four little motor mount rubbery things. So I do love working on these. They're so easy compared to like the Backmans or, you know, the really cheapy stuff. You've got four pins, two there, two there, and it, the shell just comes off. It's great. Now I will be replacing this rusty power bar. I don't understand how these get quite so rusty. Let's get this off for a start. And if you don't know, this bar here transfers the power from this point on the front truck to the motor negative, is it? Positive? Negative? Positive. And then it also transfers the power from there over to the rear truck. So that will be feeding or taking the feed from this side of the wheels up, along, motor, along. And the other side where it's connected to the, the rails, the negative, if you like, is connected through the chassis itself. The whole chassis is, is metal, it's really heavy, and the, the motor sits on top of that to ground it out. Anyway, you probably all know that. So, as I was saying about this rusty power bar, I'm going to replace that with a, a soldered on wire going from there to there and from there to there. And that'll give me a permanent connection for that side of the pickups. Now, that does make it a wee bit trickier to work and stuff, but to be honest, if you've got a soldering iron, you just go, bzzzt, remove that wire, remove that wire. It's relatively easy. Okay, let's get started. I'm going to put on gloves, latex jobs, because I'm going to be using my fiberglass pencil, and these little pencils like to break off little particles and get in your skin. It's pretty nasty. So I will be removing all the wheels, um, let's see, I don't need to take the motor out, but I do want to clean the commutator. And as you can see, it's easily accessible. Get off. Easily accessible without having to remove the motor, so there's no point giving ourselves more work. I can also see that the, the brushes are in good condition. There's plenty of life left in them. So, remove the wheels, take these off. Get into the gears, make sure the gears are okay, lube them up, lube everything that's basically moving. And of course, I need to check the spacing because this is why I'm, I'm even doing this job. Let's do that right now, actually. Let's find our little standard gauge. <clears throat> Excuse me. So, it's derailing at the front, so I am suspecting the front wheels, actually. Let's have a look. So you see the little slots there. Wheels should fit in perfectly in there. Okay, so you can see, hopefully, that the wheel nearest me is not fitting in that groove. So while I've got the wheels out and cleaning them, I will correct that. I just need to bring one of the wheels out a little bit. Let's check them all. That one is also a little bit narrow as is that one. Goodness. Same at the back. That one is, that one's okay. So I've got one that's all right. And that one is really far out. I don't know who was working on this train last, but they got it way wrong. So hopefully that's actually all I need to do to get this to stop derailing. Right, let me disassemble and we'll get with the cleaning. Now, because there's no wires to get in the way, it's just so easy just to dismantle the trucks. There's a clip there and a clip there. If we remove these, we can drop the whole truck down and work on it away from the, the loco itself. I always like to be careful though. I've no idea how old 
these are. Plastic gets brittle as it gets old. Couplers fall off, you know, the usual. Okay, make sure you put it all in a nice secure container. So that will come away with the drive shaft and the worm gear. Put that somewhere safe and that drops out. Do the other side. Broken my law, not my law, I've broken my rule. I like to have the, the front pointing to my left so that I can just keep everything in order and it'll go back together the way it's supposed to. Second clip. Oh, I'm always so paranoid with these things because I don't have spares yet. Well, I do, but they're on other locos that run. I don't actually have any junkers at this point. So that will change soon. So we can pull that out. Drive shaft out, worm gear. I should point out though that you see this little square bearing, I suppose it is. Inside that, when you remove that, there is a tiny little, I think it's a thrust washer there. You see it? You don't want to lose that. Make sure that stays on. Oh, it's magnetic. Look, not even touching it. Well, I'm sure it's not magnetic. I'm sure it's a screwdriver that's magnetic. Anyway, I'll put that little thing back on for now. Now, this has got quite quite a lot of lube on it, which is strange. But, oh well, I guess someone gave it a shot to try and make it run a bit better. They possibly put the oil in the wrong place. Anyway, let us continue. Drive shaft, that's a, a little extension drive shaft. Kind of looks broken at the top. It's not a very nice finish. Let me check the other side. Now yeah, that looks pretty nasty as well. I wonder if someone's replaced these and they've just cut something down to fit. Hopefully it doesn't matter. Right, that truck pops down. Put that on the tray. So I've got everything in order now. Anything to do here? Yeah, let's uh, clean the commutator and this little brass strap. I'm going to use a combination of things. I'm going to use some IPA. I've forgotten what it stands for. Isopropyl alcohol. It dries pretty quickly, but it does get right into the cracks and crevices. If I actually get it wet, you know. There we go. And it dries pretty quickly. So I usually just brush it with this. Bear in mind, I'm going to be soldering on some new wires to this bar here. So I want it clean. Yeah, you can even see how much dirt it's bringing off. And let's do the commutator while we're here. I don't want this super wet, but I do want it clean. We'll clean the pencil while I go, otherwise I'm just spreading the dirt about, right? Get in there with a Q-tip. Pick up any excess dirt. Which there's a lot of. And a final step, I need to get a very sharp cocktail stick and get into these grooves and make sure there's nothing hiding in there. Well that's not going to work is it? It needs to be sharper than that. Get a wee bit of hair in there as well. Probably been running a carpet. Anyway, make sure these grooves are clean. Right, commutator's done. Top bar is clean. We are done with this part. 
Let's move on to the tedious cleaning section. We will start with the rear truck. We have a clip here. And we have a clip along the bottom. I found personally, and if you break yours by doing this, don't blame me, but I find that if I put a screwdriver in there, keep it to one side, leave it out that way. You see how there's two clips there? That usually works for me. I know it sounds like it just snapped, but it's not, it's fine. And I work the screwdriver all the way down to get to the second clip, like so. Wow, this is a tighty. There we go. Okay. That clip off gives us access to all the wheels and all the gears. You'll also notice that this is going to fall apart like so. Let's see, the gears are wanting to locate on that side. So I can lift this off like so. See all the gears. They look pretty clean actually, a little bit dry. I'm not seeing any grease or lube or, you know, the thicker lubrication in there. So I better be adding something in there. Get the wheels out. Keep them in order as well. Not that it really matters. Oh yeah, they're, they're super dry. So that's going to help with the noise. Or reduce the noise once I put some lube in there. I also like to just add a little drop of oil in these little holes where the, the axles sit, where the wheels go in. Possibly not really supposed to do that, but I've not seen anything bad happening by doing that, and it does help it look, make it a little bit quieter. So I'll put that aside. I'm going to clean the wheels one by one with my little fiberglass pencil Q-tips IPA. I have noticed sometimes though on really filled up wheels I need to actually scrape the dirt off, it's that bad. I don't think it's too bad here. Nah, I'll just use a swab. And then once they're all clean, I'll check the spacing and reassemble. Wheels are all nice and clean. You'll notice I did have to scrape a couple of them. You can see the clumps of dirt that I managed to scrape off. So anyway, they're nice and clean now. So let's go through them all with the gauge and resize where required. So this one is too narrow by about a mil, possibly more. A little bit more. Actually, no. I'm going to. I'm going to keep them just, just within the gaps, because I did this on a previous Athern six axle, and if you get them too precise in the middle, they don't work great. So only just narrow enough. Yeah, I don't want them too wide. Is what I'm trying to say. Okay, that's one. I don't know what about Athens. If there's something about Athens, they do not, they do not like imperfect track, shall we say? That's two. Every other six axle is fine, but just the Athens, I've got a problem. But that's okay. I still love them. Don't get me wrong. It's still my favourite manufacturer at the moment. Okay, first set done. Wow, I mean, that's not even fitting in. This is crazy. Two. Two? Don't know why I said two. Hey, I've got one that actually doesn't need adjusted. Amazing. Amazing. 
Right, my wheels are all done, finally. So I will lube all the gears, reassemble all the trucks, put a drip of oil in all those little brass bearings in there, and then we'll be ready to reassemble back into the chassis. Trucks have reassembled. You notice that this top section is actually quite rusty. In my little fiberglass pencil kit, I also have a brass brush and a sort of steel brush. So I'm going to clean that with the steel brush, since that's what it's for, after all. Because I'm going to be soldering on a wire to go from this connection to the top of the motor for the positive connection. So we may as well make this as clean as possible. Must have been sitting in a damp shed or something. Don't see why else it would be covered in surface rust. Strange. Okay. I mean, the other one's spotless. It's very strange. Anyway, they're done. Obviously, I still need to make sure to put some lube on the worm gears when I put them back in which I'm ready to do now I believe. So let's move everything out the way that we're no longer requiring. Okay let us make sure we've got these at the right way around. There's a locating pin at the bottom of the chassis there that goes in there. I'm just making sure it's the right way around first. Just in case I swapped them over. Yeah. Definitely doesn't go that way. <laughs> right, so it goes that way. So, we need to get the worm gear on there. You've got a little square bearing, collar, spacer holder things. I don't know what they're called. A wee bit awkward to get in. Oh my goodness. Might need to resort to tweezers at this stage. Get in. It's a very precise fit. There we go. Right, one is in. I think I can... You know, once I put the dry shaft in, I think I can feed it in this way. Not sure about that, actually. Uh, no, because it goes that way. So, after all that, I need to put this in once the truck's in. That's annoying. Right, so, we'll put that in there. We'll put the clip over the top. No, we can't put the clip over the top because we need to put the gear in. So let's get this down there. Need the drive shaft. I'm going to put that rough end. Oh great, I've just dropped this. This is a comedy of errors. Bear with me. That rough section of the drive shaft, I'm going to put that in there first. It's got a sort of keyway, if you can see that, because it only goes in one way. And as usual, I can't fit it. God. Right, that's in there. Get my little square thing back on. Slide that in the drive shaft. Then put the worm gear on. I have done this before, you know. I think it would be easy by now, but it's still just as fiddly. Just my fat fingers are getting in the way. Yeah, that's better. Right, so don't use your fingers. Use a screwdriver or something. Get some lube in there. I'm 
Halfway. Now we can put the clip on. Everything is turning. Yes. All right, let's get the other side on. Normally at this stage, I'd be taking this light off and putting in an LED, but I'm not doing that today because I might start just putting in decoders into things and then I'll have to rewire them all anyway. So let's not waste our time. That goes in there like so. This one's a wee bit trickier because this bar's in the way, but I'm sure we'll still manage. Get the drive shaft in first. Like so. Worm gear. Try not to drop the little brass thing this time. You can go in there. Pop that in there underneath that annoying bar that's in the way. Using the screwdriver this time just to rotate the square things around. Oh, much easier using the screwdriver, guys. Luby Lou. And the clip. If we can get it in there. Yes. We are all back together apart from the power bar. So, better go and warm up the soldering iron. Now, you will need a fairly decent soldering iron to get hot enough to be able to solder to that stuff. Just your, your average cheapy one I discovered just does not get hot enough. I mean, it's only about like 50 or 60 degrees it needs to get hotter, but as I say, the, the mega cheapies, they just won't do it. Right, so I'm going to do this in two sections, one there for to go to there and one there to go under there. Oh, that's a bit filthy. Is that a clean? It's better. Get a bit of flux on there as well, clean it up. Right, let's heat this up and see if we can get some solder on there. Lovely. That should do it. Let's get some wire. I'm using a fairly thin section of wire because I want it to be flexible because the trucks have to turn a little bit with it, you know. Oh, just get your wire strippers. That's why I got me. I mean, things after all. I make life hard for yourself when there's tools that can do it for you. It's a wee bit long, actually. If it's too long, it's just going to fill the, the flywheel because the, the body will push that down the way. You want it long enough to be flexible, but not too, too long that it gets in the way. That's one section. That one's going to be okay at that size, I believe. Let's just turn all these. Oh, I still need to get a bit of solder on the front and rear trucks, don't I? Bit of flux there. Let's go with that section there that's more visible.
Right, so I've got a blob there, blob there. It's got wire on here. Make sure that can rotate. Yeah, that's enough. So I mean, there's enough there. There's enough movement that it's not stretching the wire, and the wire's not getting pushed down onto the flywheel. All right, let's get this other wire on. Oh, it's still hot. And we're done. Just need to get the body back on, which is super easy. Stick it over there. And these little pins need to get clipped over. One there. Same on that side. And we're good. Right, let's get to the track, see if we've improved anything. Now, this may take a few laps to circulate the lubrification. The main thing I'm looking for here is that it stays on the tracks. Right, let's see. It should at least move off slowly. I don't know if it'll be quiet though. Oh, it is smooth and relatively quiet. Oh yeah, that's nice. Lovely, let's give it a wee bit more speed or we'll be here all day. So, someone pointed out to me, oh that's a wee bit fast, hold on. Someone pointed out to me that this B&O livery is a fantasy paint scheme. They never actually had one like this, but Athern likes to make money, so they made this one up. I actually really like it, I think it looks majestic. Almost regal, which is the same as majestic. Hurry up, you've got to get away around there and I'm running out of things to talk about. Yeah, move on. That looks really nice. Now, I don't know what I'm going to hook up to this for hauling purposes. I think it would look nice with some passenger coaches, but I don't have... I don't have any ready for it. Okay, we're coming to the, the tricky bit. Down the bottom of this hill, at the end of the rocks, is when it likes to fall off. Round about there. It slows down a lot there. I guess it's tight though. It's an 18, 18 inch radius and a six axle Athern. And Atherns are famous for heating tight curves. But anyway, it stayed on the track. So that's good. Oh, I just love how smooth these big Atherns are. And you know what I'm going to have to do next? I'm going to have to get some LEDs in that. Because it just looks a bit dead inside. Okay, don't panic about this. Every big loco I've got stalls at this bend because it just seems to be a wee bit tighter than all the rest. A bit more power and it'll be fine. Lovely. Another successful Cheer Up Tuesday. Just need to find some appropriate consist for it to haul around the track for its victory lap. Make sure you join me on Friday for Fix It Friday. Got to find out what's wrong with this chessy that I picked up also at the train show. The lights are on, but nobody's home. Take care, everyone. See you soon. Enjoy the victory lap. We have run into a slight technical issue. If you can see the coupler down there, it will fit there and connect. But as soon as this goes round the bend, look how far out the coupler goes. That's because this coupler is attached to the frame and not the trucks. And as you can see, or not as the case may be, 
there's absolutely no way that coupler is going to make it around there. It just it just pulls this truck off the track and we have massive amounts of death. So unfortunately, this is going to have to just make a solo run for its victory lap till I can come up with a better solution. This is because it's an 18-inch radius cover. I'm sure it'll be fine in like a 22 or, or more. Anyway, it was a semi-win.